Hello and welcome to Scott's Odyssey. Today we're at an elevation of 2,484 feet and wandering deep into the 71,683 acre Pennsylvania Buchanan State Forest, a location known historically for its inclusions with the abandoned Sidling Hill Turnpike Tunnel and made available due to Vanderbilt's folly. This site is named after a man formerly regarded as the worst president of the United States, which is now up for contention. The 15th president, James Buchanan. Some things you will no longer see here in this wondrous forest are Pennsylvania native hardwoods, such as northern red oaks and red maples. Instead, you will find young softwoods like the hemlocks and white pine. Oh, <laughs> and a World War II prisoner of war camp. Wait, this feels awfully familiar. See you in a minute. Welcome back. If you've watched my videos before, thank you for your patronage. And if you're new to Scott's Odyssey, welcome aboard. Now, I mentioned a familiarity to the intro of this video, as well as reference to a prisoner of war camp. And well, here we are at yet another World War II POW camp located deep within a Pennsylvania forest. But before we dig into that subject, we need to go back in time to when this area was not a forest, but instead an infernal wasteland of soot coal ash and stone. By this time, it should be no secret that Pennsylvania during the 1800s, especially in that latter part of the century, was an absolute outer ring of Dante's hell when it came to the land. Whatever was not tilled and flattened was most definitely cut, burned, and strip mined. The entire state was a post-apocalyptic wasteland left behind from the ever-growing industrial revolution that needed more iron and more fire to forge it. The south central portion of Pennsylvania was by no means immune to the ever-growing greed machine, but as we also know, we fixed it as best as we could when we came to terms with what we had done. But before we fixed it, there was a particular transportation line that was being built through this very area. It was to be in direct competition with the Pennsylvania Railroad and was being built by Robert Barron, William H. Vanderbilt, son of Robert Barron Commodore Cornelius Vanderbilt, who created the Vanderbilt Empire of railroads and shipping businesses. If not for an oversight in how much money was being spent on cutting through mountains and the absolute Judas Brutus executed by financial backer J.P. Morgan, the South Penn Railroad of William Vanderbilt would be the name you would remember in history and not the Pennsylvania Railroad that we so dearly revere today. No, instead it became known as Vanderbilt's Folly and left behind a long series of abandoned tunnels and very low grade slope embankments that ran almost the entire length of Pennsylvania through the Alleghenies. Why do I mention the burning of Pennsylvania's forest and then the railroad conquest of rich men? Well, quite simply because the two of them are directly connected. Not just because of the iron and deforestation, but because of what the trains did to the land after the deforestation had ended. You see, everyone figured the trees and forests would just grow back. What they did not anticipate is that the train's exhaust would kick out sparks, igniting wildfires multiple times a year that would quickly grow out of control and wipe out any chance of a tree gaining more than a few inches of height before succumbing to the fires of wealth. After about 20 or 30 years, people got really tired of seeing all the decimation caused by their forefathers and cried out to their government to have this issue corrected. Just 35 miles north of here was the location where another man who was an extreme environmentalist and was really pushing for the rebuilding of our forest had just 10 years earlier found himself placed into a great position within the government. It was in 1895 that the environmentalist and father of forestry, Joseph Trimble Rothrock, had become the very first commissioner of the newly formed Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture, which existed under the also newly formed Division of Forestry. As the lumber and mining era for this area came to a close, the Commonwealth was left with an issue of 
vast former forest being decimated through harvesting with nobody doing any replanning to make the forest a sustainable environment. The former companies just abandoned the land and moved on. So the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania acquired all of these lands through attrition and easements. The determination of what to do with the land was quite simple. We would replant trees to rebuild the forests. Skipping forward to June 5th, 1933 on Sidling Hill, just next to the Oregon Creek, Pennsylvania established Civil Conservation Corps Indian Town Gap Base Camp 62, Branch Camp Number S52. Carrying the formal name of Sidling Hill Camp and the local common name of Wells Camp or Wells Tannery Camp. Their mission was to reform the terrain into a state forest that would be named the Buchanan State Forest in honor of the 15th president of the United States who was born and mostly raised just 15 miles from this camp. It is argued if this camp closed in 1937 in preparation to allow turnpike workers a camp for 1939 through 1940, and from 1941 through 1944 acting as a Mennonite civilian public service camp, a CPS camp, a camp which held conscientious objectors to the war. But what we are sure of is that the CCCs ended their functions on June 30th of 1942 due directly to the U.S. involvement in World War II. During World War II, the United States established 175 prisoner of war branch camps serving 511 area camps with over 425,000 prisoners of war, most of whom were German. In Pennsylvania, there were approximately 32 secret prisoner of war camps. Some of these included Camp Huntsdale, Camp New Cumberland, some unnamed camp at the McMillan Woods near Gettysburg, Indian Town Gap Military Reservation, Camp Reynolds, Umstead Field, Tobihana Military Reservation, uh, the Valley Forge General Hospital, and Camp Pine Grove, or Michelle. This camp was not one of the secret POW camps, but it too became one of the branch camps inside the Commonwealth for POWs. In 1945, as directed by the Commanding General of Army Service Forces, Wells Tannery Camp Number S-52 was renamed to Sidling Hill POW Branch Camp Number 6, an establishment of the Third Services Command, which were the U.S. Army Services specific to administration of recruiting stations, uh, induction centers, reception centers, internal security districts, motor repair shops, ordnance and signal corps repair shops, medical and dental laboratories, reserve officers, training corps, uh, state guard affairs, general dispensaries, finance officers, officer procurement boards, general hospitals, auxiliary service force training centers, disciplinary barracks, recreation camps, but most importantly, the enemy alien and prisoner of war camps. Unlike the Pine Grove POW camp, more commonly known as Camp Michaud, which we visited in this video, the Sidling Hill camp was not designed for special purpose detainment and interrogation by the PO Box 1142 agents. <laughs> what? Who are the PO Box 1142 agents? You, you, you don't remember. Good, because that's the way we like it. Fine, within the Third Service Command, there was yet another group, beyond the recreation camps and general dispensaries, that were in charge of secret or sub-military intelligence. The branches were called MISX and MISY, and for this location, MISY were the people who used to go out and do deep interrogation of POWs kept at Camp Michaud. The group was so secret that even the agents did not know where they were going in order to interrogate a prisoner. And when they were asked who they were, their response was always PO Box 1142. Again, because most of these videos are currently centered in Pennsylvania, we're not going to be going down the tangential rabbit hole of PO Box 1142, MISX, MISY, nor Operation Paperclip. But I highly recommend that if you're interested in that, leave me a comment below, and maybe with enough request, I'll separate out a video into the secret intelligence groups that gave the United States significant leverage into becoming the one world superpower we are now. The POWs that were interned in this location were put to work as lumberjacks and would cut the young growth timbers in order for the U.S. to retrieve the pulp of the product for the war machine. 
specifically stated, and I quote, Right now, pulpwood and pulp are among the most critical of our needed supplies. So, with all of that information put out there for your brain to be tickling with anticipation and fully seated for some nefarious future Manchurian candidate missions, let's move on to the full exploration of what remains here at the Sidling Hill POW Branch Camp number six.
They, like all prisoners, were paid a daily wage and wore uniforms with PW stenciled on the back of their shirts and on the sides of the pant legs. Unlike many other camps, this one had no interactions with any of the civilians in Fulton County and was built near the end of the war, so as a result, there are no known existing photos of any portion of this camp, nor of any of the officers or prisoners whom had resided here. In March of 1946, the camp closed its gates and forwarded all remaining prisoners to Fort Indian Town Gap processing barracks, and then they were returned to Germany. Like all places of internment, I am sure there are horror stories associated with this camp that we no longer know. But in war, one of the most historically recorded events that we as people seem to repeat in perpetuity, the story of who we once were. It remains and it does not take a hard stretch of the imagination of what may have transpired at this location. I hope you enjoyed this adventure through another piece of history. And as always, I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.